Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for coming by. Hope you had a great day. Um, yes, so this is the session. Let me help you help me. Um, the Being Human track, I'm pretty excited uh, being able to talk a bit about like a personal story, share with you um, um, yeah, what I've done so far in the Drupal community. So um, I guess everyone who showed up for Being Human session already would expect not any technical details. Um, um, yeah, but I guess we're on the same page for that. So um, my name is Josef Dabonik. You can find me online as Tasio. Um, I'm on Twitter and Drupal community. Um, if you have ever questions, um, if you want to get in touch, just uh, reach out to me. Um, also the sessions, they are already online. So on slides.com slash Tasio slash help. Um, you can find these. Um, there's not going to be a lot of bullet points, uh, as you can expect, but I tried to kind of lay out um, different topics, and I want to just uh, share my very personal stor story, um, how I got into the community, how I got into working in different environments. Um, yeah, I think personal growth is definitely something that we, we all, that just happens to us, and figuring out how to deal with that um, I think it's something that I started reflecting more and more, especially also when hanging out with, with people like you at Drupal conferences. Um, some of you I already know from a couple of years ago, some of you I've, I've never met before, um, but those who I've met like a couple of years ago, it's really interesting to see how like people just start new jobs, they do new things. Um, so I'm really passionate about the community and um, kind of want to share a bit today. So the, um, the outline, what it's going to be about is, um, so I want to talk about how I got started with Drupal and doing the things that I do today. So that's going to be mainly related to work, but something that I find kind of similar as what Dania, um, the founder, one of the founders of Amazing Labs described today is um, that work and private life, that something that some people separate very strictly and some people don't separate it that much and I think also especially in my case I I am happy to shift in some work hours into the private life and then and then the other way around for example traveling to DrupalCon is it work or is it private life I don't know um, so then I want to talk a bit about the initiatives that um, led my work plus private life plus Drupal life and what I recently have been doing over the last two years at Amazy Labs all right, so let's get started. Um, who is who of you has been with Drupal for more than two years? Okay, cool, most of you. Um, and so I guess everyone has started at some point uh, with open source. Um, for me, so I started uh, with technology. Basically, my father asked me to help him with building his website. Um, so pretty early on, I, I got got in touch with computers, I, co I studied computer science and I worked for Siemens, like a kind of boring big company, um, introducing SharePoint into a Microsoft environment. Um, but already there, our, our, our um, department uh, focused on Linux, so we already had some, some inspiration there. And all that always, from what I read on the internet, open source kind of felt naturally right to me like the principles of open source felt really right, but I never really got into touch to other than downloading Firefox when it was available and feeling like, okay, now I'm on the good side or using Linux for a couple of time. Um, like using it really felt good to me, um, but I think somewhere underneath, I already wanted to start to contribute, but I just didn't know where to start. Um, so I got into another company where we used Java and then um, I did some projects with Plone um, so I got connected with the community, but the Plone community was not that active, or it was kind of active, but I didn't know where to start. And then finally in Nicaragua, um, that's in Central America, somebody organized uh, the first Drupal camp that was in 2009, um, like an open source conference, and they brought in people like Enzo. So this guy over there, he has been, oh, he will do the community keynote tomorrow, I think. Um, so it was kind of, interesting to see 
like a grassroots movement for open source in a development country like Nicaragua. Um, and I just by accident happened to be there. Uh, I worked for a cultural center rebuilding their website that was built by uh, development seed uh, people. So some, some folks that have been in the Drupal community quite a while ago. Um, and they kind of brought me into the, the open source that is powered by the people, right? Because there's, I think there's the open source that is that you can download and that you can see online, but then to, to be at an event, to, to be able to experience meeting people. Uh, yeah, I forgot there's actually Edison Barry also there, who is the, the community representative on the DA. Um, so there were already qu quite, quite a lot of interesting people in 2009 that I got to meet by, by luck, I think by privilege. Um, and yeah, so that kind of motivated me a lot. Um, and then I started at the Cultural Center um, as I was learning Drupal for myself. Um, I'm basically self-taught a lot, so I, I, I just learn by, by trying out new stuff and I, I learn progress, programming myself and so on. So Drupal was really a great tool, um, like you can install so many modules and you can basically teach it yourself or it, that works out pretty well for me. But also being able to connect with those, there were some really good mentors that helped me create my first patch. So finally, like being able to create a patch was kind of incredible for me because I was able to improve a system that is there and be able to contribute something back in terms of code. Um, so thanks a lot um, to Natural Rogers who introduced me into the patch workflow, for example. Um, and that way I found out, okay, I can do something here. Um, so I passed the whole year in Nicaragua building the website for the cultural center and also started teaching other students because, I don't know, just wanted to try it. Um, and then in order to be able to do a bit more of that, um, I started traveling around um, whole Central America. And I think that's also where my private interest of getting to know places, getting to know people kind of aligned well with um, the way we communicate today over the internet, right? So there was groups at Drupal.org. Um, there were some mailing lists around where I could get in touch with uh, open source enthusiasts, with people from local Linux user groups, um, already kind of existing um, Drupal user groups. Um, and kind of arranged my travels around Drupal communities. So that was kind of awesome. And it really took no nobody to tell me to do that. It was just like, well, it's, gonna be n it, it's not like I have to give something, but it's more like I, I get back a lot from them because on that way, um, they organized everything for me. They set up um, like a workshop room like here. Um, and we brought in some students and we explained them what Drupal is, how it works. Um, and we went through the first basic steps of setting up a Drupal site, uh, which was kind of exciting. It was also very tiring, of course, um, like speaking in Spanish to students. Um, but with, with every workshop, we got more practice. And um, especially the program around was also really nice. So for example, the guy down there, um, Kasi, he, he drove me around um, half of Guatemala, so we went up here and then to the coast. Um, so he was he was really helping a lot, and um, it was kind of kind of a, an incredible experience, so to say, to be able to just invest a bit of time, a bit of knowledge, maybe, um, but getting back so much uh, positive feedback from the community. Um, yes. So I think from this first episode of. Um, finding out about Drupal and then starting um, to build my own site, but also being able to share um, on the code level, but even more on the people level, that kind of really got me into Drupal. And um, I'm still super, super passionate about the technology, but I think um, just comparing it to other systems, maybe another system would be more interesting in terms of technology, but this kind of foundation of being able to present and connect um, with people from all over the world through the Drupal community and the wide open source communities. Um, that's definitely an incredibly good foundation that, that kind of built me up there in, in Central America. So let's talk a bit, little bit about um, other initiatives. Um, 
so 2009 I so I basically did the 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 one year in Nicaragua was instead of doing a military service in, Aus service in Austria so after that I continued my studies as a ma master student at the university um, but I also found um, people from the Austrian Drupal community and they were already pretty awesome like they did so much stuff um, there's there's a couple of Austrians also around at the conference. Um, there's Wolfgang Ziegler and Christian Ziegler, um, who founded the Austrian Drupal community. Who Wolfgang is the creator of the entity module, of the rules module. Klaus is the maintainer of web service client module. So they really bound some, built some foundational stuff. And just by knowing about Drupal, I was able to connect with them and uh, ex exchange ideas. Um, and then, well, they hired me, so I was able to work beside studies, just 15 hours per week. I was able to work for um, for Epico, which is an Austrian Drupal agency. And it was really fun because we, we always combined uh, university work with uh, actual work. So for the university, we had to take courses and we said, okay, we're gonna build, like write uh, a module and that module we're gonna publish on Drupal.org. We're gonna benefit from programs like Google Summer of Code um, so they, we would get some public funding or funding from Google Summer of Code and then we could spend time on creating open source modules um, but they would then be later used um, uh, for the company's purposes but can also be reused by anyone else. I think that, that really um, made up a big space for, for community contribution and we co when we compare it to what we see today, um, a lot of a lot of work that the Drupal community relies on is basically has to be funded somehow, right? I mean, we either need students who have a lot of time, but or we need to have companies that invest a lot of time in order to build so well reusable parts. Okay, sit down. So working together with, with these people really allowed um, to learn a lot and also to contribute back a lot. Um, on a more foundational level, I'd say. So the recruiter distribution builds up on search API, builds up on entities, um, builds up on a lot of, lot of foundational uh, modules. And from there, um, when I talk about initiatives, I think that was the second uh, really cool moment for me was the Drupal Dev Days in Barcelona in 2012. Um, because I was always interested in what the people from development seat do. I, feel like kind of a fanboy of, of ev development seed and now they have rebranded to Mapbox or the, there's a new company called Mapbox and they unfortunately they don't do much with Drupal anymore but it's also understandable because they just don't need the Drupal technology behind that. Um, but back then I was really into mapping so um, op there was open layers and there were the new kit on the block was the leaflet module. Um, so. Uh, in 2012, I think we were still mainly on open layers. Um, and I've kind of, through the issue queues and through Drupal.org, we kind of, um, I got more and more involved in the mapping area. So Geofield and all the, all the open layers, um, extension modules and Geocoder and so forth. So we just, for the Drupal developer days, we set up a sprint. Um, and more than 20 people showed up at the sprints and we were all working together on mapping, which is kind of incredible, right? I mean. So I'm not a, a hardcore coder, um, I know how code works, um, but I think I found another way to be able to contribute by bringing people together and working together um, at this uh, sprint. Um, yeah, and then also started to write my own module for, so maybe you've heard about the Facet API Pretty Paths module, which sounds very specific, um, and it actually is. And it's not a lot of code, but it kind of solve, solves a, a weird problem where in Drupal 7 we had Apache Solar and Search API modules and there's like those two different worlds that then have an abstraction on top of it. Um, that's the, the Facet API. And yeah, in order to, to realize the pretty paths for them and to be able to integrate with, with all the different search modules, um, there was kind of uh, a fun challenge to take on. And also, um, as I've mentioned, the university work uh, aligned pretty well, so I, I started to, to write my thesis, and the thesis was about geo cluster. 
Um, it's an extension module for Drupal 7 that implements uh, a, a geographic uh, clustering algorithm. And it was, was really fun to kind of work on a scientific level, but to be able to actually um, break it down to something that is that works as a module and kind of implement it on the different layers of views integration, search API integration, PHP integration. Um, yeah, so I think that was, um, yeah, I think both the community and the actual work uh, really led well together and um, as part of the Drupal Austria community, um, we did a lot of initiatives. So for example, we organized the Drupal Austria Roadshow, which was kind of um, those enthusiasts from Vienna. We felt like, okay, everything is happening in Vienna, but we also want to spread the word out to different parts of Austria. So we traveled from city to city and had presentations about Drupal there. Then we organized the Drupal camp in Vienna, like this one. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think also this kinds of being able to present at Drupal events just by having practice. Um, I just like to, sh to share with, with the people that also made me now end up having two presentations um, at one conference. Um, and yeah, it, for example, it allowed me to have a uh, first keynote presentation in, in Donetsk where it was a bit crazy because that was just before the war started in the Ukra Ukraine. Um, but in general, I really like that we came up with the theme together for, for um, Drupal Camp Vienna, for example, that's connecting open minds. So, so the conference really aligns well with what Drupal 8 now is about, with bridging community, uh, br building bridges to other communities and bringing together a lot of open minds as we do um, currently at DrupalCon. Um, yeah, so kind of the conclusion for that is um, working in open source is really fun. I mean, you can invest a lot, you can do a lot, but you also get back a lot. Um, now, you might uh, expect also some, um, some other stuff. So what I'd like to talk more a bit more about is um, how I then started to work for Amazing Labs and I think um, transitioning away from being a student, working part-time into a full-time position is definitely also that ch has, has changed a lot in my life. Um, but I think it's really important for me to bring in all of these community values because there's, <coughs> they're still like the foundation that I want to, that I want to build upon. Um, so why Amazing Labs? Well, I kind of got bored living in the same city all my life. Um, I think there were like two options, either to build, to help build up one of the agencies that already existed in Vienna. Um, they were like around four to five people each. Um, so it would have been a very, a very tough job from my perspective because I just coming out of university, I don't have any, <laughs> any knowledge about how a company works. And I felt like, so we all have the, the best powers in our hands. We have created all of these interesting modules, but we don't have, cool clients or I don't know, like we just, it, the, the, the match wasn't there. Um, so we had the best technology, but the project were kind of not, not as exciting as I would like to have seen them. So that was kind of one, one part of the decision. The other part of the decision was uh, like being an explorer, being a traveler. I just wanted to get away from Vienna for a, couple, for, for a bit at least. Um, and then finding a Maisie Labs was kind of um, a fun accident, I'd say. Like I, I always felt like a Maisie Labs is, is a lot bigger than, than where I can be. Um, and yeah, but Michael had the job offer open to be like a deputy CTO. And I thought, well, I have very broad knowledge. I know about site building. I understand backend. I understand front end, but I don't feel really good at any of these. So maybe being a tech lead makes sense because I understand what's going on, um, but I don't feel like I want to specialize in any of these. Um, so yeah, we met um, at Drupal Dev Days um, and then they just said, yeah, come by. Um, Switzerland is maybe not the, the craziest move away from Austria. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, an hour flight or like seven hours by train. Um, but being close to the mountains and is, yeah, especially being able to work with such a passionate team, such a diverse team, 
um, I think that was the m one of the main reasons. Like, um, yeah, especially diversity is is one of the biggest plus that I see working there. So, um, also the the kind of getting started with the company was really fun because uh, the, we had this kind of team event where we spent two days in the mountains uh, or in the forest. Um, camping together and being trained by an expert that knows how to survive like so we had like a survival training so kind of combining the 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 hard working on a laptop kind of being able to put it into total contrast and just hang out with the team in nature that that kind of um, was the perfect start I think so yeah starting that's that's kind of exciting right but then you see like all these new challenges like wow <laughs> should I now be responsible for a uh, team? Um, what does it actually mean being a deputy? Like, um, there's still like Michael is still there and managing everything, and I I I I got really well introduced into new projects, so I could like be responsible for tiny parts in the beginning. So I think that that worked out really well. But both of us, neither Michael nor me, really knew what what would how would the setup really work out um, being a deputy to him. So yeah, I, I kind of, I think I'm always uh, thinking in, so I'm very much an optimist, but I'm also fearful in a sense that I kind of see all the options and what could possibly go wrong and stuff. Um, so kind of figuring out the, the fir like making those first steps was kind of, yeah, kind of weird because I just didn't, I usually don't have like a big plan. I know how to solve problems. I know how to be positive, how to, how to have a good discussion and how to um, like try to convince people or uh, most importantly hear their opinions and try to align different opinions. But laying out a big plan for myself was never like how I approached life. I just said like to my parents, well, I think I'm gonna quit the job I have. No, I haven't heard from Amazi yet, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, and they were really worried before I took the decision. Um, and then also at Amazi, I was like, well, give me some tasks. Let's do something. And um, yeah, kind of figuring out that in the beginning was kind of interesting. Um, so I think what I what I did what what I did in the beginning also was um, like. So when we had when we had that first that first hike hike tour, um, Greg, one of the founders, and um, asked me about my strengths and my weaknesses, and I thought and I said, well, my weakness probably is uh, that decision making is really hard for me. Um, so I think one of the one of the first steps that I had to learn is how to take decisions and how to take first steps, maybe. Doing everything perfect in the beginning will just not be possible, but being able to make first steps, that, that really, really helped. Um, so I think also aligning like personal goals, like maintaining flexibility, um, being able to try out new things um, with company goals, like stability, being able to predict stuff to clients, um, figuring out the right balance there. Um, that, was, that was kind of um, interesting to figure out. Um, yeah, let's see. So, so how how is it that you kind of? I think that picture for me is like nesting into something, right? Like getting settled. Um, that how how did it really work out? So I think what what I really what I'm really passionate about when working together with the team is that I try to listen a lot. Um, my perspective my perspective on leadership is not that I want to tell people exactly what to do all the time. But I rather want to be able to support them and coach them um, to um, reach their goals and the company goals together. Um, and I think that's that's something that in the long term um, kind of makes sense, at least to me. But but kind of just jumping into an existing team and telling them, hey, I, I will not tell you what to do, but you will have to figure it out yourself, um, is definitely a long term process that that uh, we kind of go through together. Um, yes, um, like just figuring out how to get delegate task was, was really uh, hard for me in the beginning because, you know, you used to build it yourself, you used to implement it yourself, you, 
you're maybe not even able to tell expectations to your coworkers or to your customers because you're just used to I will I will figure it out. That's I'm I cannot tell you now how it should be in the end because I still have to try it out stuff. That kind of thing um, really changed how the way like how how I think about solving problems because I never was in a situation where I would sell something to a customer, I would sell something to a team member in terms of handing over tasks. That was not something that I did before and that I do now a lot, of course, right? Um, but I really like those challenges, I think. Without challenges, life would be really, really, really boring. Um, yeah. one, one very important thing for me is that I wanna step away from the critical path. So I think in like a leadership position, I want to be able to jump in when I'm needed and be available to my team members when they need me. So um, one, one thing that I really try hard is because as a tech lead, it's really easy for people to, to throw work at you because you're supposed to know a bit about everything. Um, so one of the goals is to make the processes that way that um, it doesn't happen too much, right? I mean, that should be the case for anyone. Um, doesn't mean that the, um, that the developers should get all the work, um, but it should be in a way that it's sustainable. And I think being able to react fast is something that I really like. And so the flexibility that is like a need that I have, maybe I can also put it into a strength for the team to being able to, to help out and solve problems, but not that they would continuously rely on me doing stuff. Um, yeah, so... Mm, Basically, it trickles down to the to the word coaching for me. Um, that's something that that also Amazi has been offering. Um, the like basically every team member gets an offer. You can take coaching if you like to. So we can like consult a life coach and discussing with him um, the the goals I have or figuring out that I don't have any goals together with him and thinking about why I don't have any goals. Um, that kind of situation made me think, well, coaching is kind of a description for the way I work at Amazie. Like rather than being a manager that tells people today is this, today is this, today is this, I try to set up processes for the team to be able to perform excellent on the way they want to perform that. And definitely there, there is other people stepping up and taking management roles themselves. Um, so we have like um, tech leads who are responsible for an area, for example, like backend lead or front end lead. Um, we have product owners slash project managers who um, set up timelines together with clients. Um, so kind of, I think also the team setup helps. Um, I'm not saying that a team doesn't need a manager at all. I just, the, the way I see it is that I think where I'm good at is coaching. Um, so that's what I, um, that's what I think I'm trying to do good. Yes. Um, and yeah, it's kind of like taking, taking baby steps at the time, right? Because the, especially when, for me, like when starting something entirely new, the, 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 the pile of stuff to figure out kind of felt like impossible. Um, and you're like also in between, um, yeah, I mean, there's like hierarchy, of course, you have a boss and then you have developers. Um, and I think with the way that trying to be supportive, trying to find a balance and to be like very um, adaptive um, to others kind of makes me uh, or allows me to, to take those steps. Um, yeah. So the way I think I take these steps or um, so far works works pretty well. Um, there's definitely some, there have been times, especially before before we said like, okay, we are now officially gonna hand over the, the, the CTO role from Michael to me, kind of made me like, okay, well, now it's getting for real and stuff. Um, but kind of taking steps another at a time. Now when I look back, it's, yeah, it's something, kind of incredible, you don't, you don't really realize how much you can get done um, in a year. Uh, like you, you think like, I'm never gonna reach that goal, but it kind of feels like um, I've been reaching a lot and we have been reaching a lot together with the whole team. 
Um, yeah. And how to reach that? That um, goal is. So I think it's really important to visualize the goals, and that's something that we currently also, I think, sometimes are struggling. That, like, Amazi is like a group and has like different companies. So continuously communicating, okay, this is the goal of this project, and this is the goal of the entire company, this is the goal of the entire group, is something that we that we try or that we're currently looking at how to align it or make it a bit more clear. Um, but I think in terms of structure, what really, really um, is like the big change that, that we started um, implementing Scrum as an agile methodology, and that kind of also very much um, I didn't, so when I now explain how I, how I think and how I feel and how I, I, I think about uh, my role, um, it kind of fits well to Scrum, but I never, like when we, when we initially thought about doing Scrum, it was more like, well, we don't have a process, uh, we kind of need a process, and it should probably be agile because waterfall is bullshit. Um, that's that's like the the common sense that you feel, but you don't really know because everyone says like, yeah, Scrum is um, really hard for an agency. It's like impossible for an agency because you're never gonna be able to work in predictable sprints with a lot of different clients and so forth. Um, so there were a lot of doubts, and I have a whole session about how we adopted Scrum. There's a video about it online already, so I'm not. I don't want to get into um, too much of the details, but kind of aligning that with the leadership role, with the kind of understanding of management that I have um, is really, really important um, because so we have now two scrum teams in Zurich and we have another scrum team in Austin and another scrum team in Cape Town. And that basically for me means um, I'm not directly part of one of those scrum teams. I'm more like coaching them. I try to be the scrum master of both scrum teams in the beginning but I just saw like by switching back and forth and being also responsible for, for other duties, I, I wasn't able to really fulfill the Scrum Master role. Um, but yeah, just figuring out that and together with the team decide, okay, what we're gonna do? Is the developer now able to step up as a Scrum Master? And now we also work together with the Scrum Coach to, to continuously improve those processes. That kind of very much aligns with the, the long-term goal um, of having self-organized teams, like that they can take their decisions. In the end, a lot of stuff can be decided by the team itself. They don't really need management to, to decide stuff for them, but they can consult management if they have questions. And obviously there's criteria like client happiness and employee happiness that have to be fulfilled. But at the end of the day, like how it's exactly gonna be implemented at the sprint is gonna take one or two weeks. That's definitely something that the team can decide. So I'm really, really passionate about Agile and I'm really looking forward to further improve the processes that we have to, to figure out the best way um, to be Agile. And it doesn't have to be Scrum. I mean, it can be, can be a mix of Kanban, Scrum, I don't know. I've, I've not much experience other than um, having lived Scrum for a year. And what I can definitely say is compared to the way we worked before, um, there's the, the, the quality of work that gets produced, the predictability and the information exchange between the developers is, is, is a lot better. There's definitely also challenges because um, that's just, I mean, Agile is just not as predictable as, as if one person has predefined everything from the beginning. Um, but I think the trade-off is definitely one to make and is also one to be able to scale and not have a single point of failure uh, that you rely on. So yeah, um, what I'd like to add here is, um, so people ask me, hey, you are CTO now, congratulations. Um, that's that's really nice to hear, thanks. Um, but it's also weird because I, I haven't felt that change. Um, I started like as a deputy and I'm now officially the CTO, but that was a very, continuous transition. So the day we sent out the announcement was more like, yeah, it's it's good to have accomplished that, but I don't feel like I need that or it's, it hasn't really changed the way uh, how I walk into office or how I go home. 
Um, what's definitely interesting wh when talking about the CTO role or, or any role, I think is the, the way where, where do you fly? Or like, are you very high up? Are you very, um, so for example, there's tech leads that will do programming or there's tech leads that will also be part of the development. Or um, for example, in my case, I try to stay away from it as much as possible, but that's not because I think it's better. It's more like, I feel like that's where I am better. <laughs> um, I just don't see myself producing very good code. I can give feedback, I can, I can train people, um, or I can specifically uh, for site building, I can definitely comment on best practices and help establish them. But um, I don't see myself being like a developer. Um, so, yeah, I think what I, one thing that I struggle with is um, like time management or that I've been constantly looking at. So, for example, how do you make a plan for the week and how do you make sure that you will be able to, to do in urgent work and uh, not so urgent work and not spend time on, on the wrong tasks? Um, so, for example, um, I spent five hours on an estimation for a big project. Um, at the end, I felt like, oh, maybe the some hours were wasted because um, ultimately my goal is to not do that kind of big estimations in the beginning, but rather um, find, like, have, I have HL implemented that way that we don't spend so much time on an initial estimation without much information but rather set up a workshop together with the client and, and kick that off. So yeah, sometimes I'm still getting lost in that uh, in, in, in those uh, clouds, um, but I try to, to stay above, to, to have kind of the big picture and be able to, to support the team when they have questions and when they feel like, okay, hey, um, I, need, I need help now. So yeah. Being able to support where needed, that's, that's, that's um, like the vision I have. Um, and in the end, it's all, it's all about collaboration, right? So it's all about how we work together. Um, so bringing people together, like bringing people together for conferences, bringing people together for sprints. This is also what I think is the solution for at work, like um, rather than handing off work from one to the other, um, if you have good meetings together, that doesn't mean you should do meetings all the time, but um, finding a good, a good balance, I think, is really important. And for example, the way we do estimation meetings where in Scrum Poker we identify different uh, views, different opinions, um, ideas about how something can be solved faster or how something is maybe a bigger risk than other people would have imagined. Um, really strengthens the team and improves the quality of work being delivered. Um, yeah. So that's kind of um, what I think is important to to kind of come to a conclusion. Um, so the the things and was it today? In the, no, it was I don't know when it was mentioned, but the word grit really uh, got stuck um, in one of the presentations that we've seen. Um, so I think being persistent and want and being able to also, maybe I cannot have, the, I cannot fulfill the vision of having a self-organized team today or tomorrow, but um, kind of identifying that this is kind of the vision I have and then finding out together with the team, together with the rest of the company, if that vision can be accomplished or if that's like a common vision. Um, that's definitely something where I would, uh, or I'm sure I, I invest my grit into. Um, yeah, I think um, being able to to communicate better is also something that that I found out. Like sometimes I don't communicate enough because I expect people just to know what um, what I'm thinking. Um, so I'm constantly trying to improve that. Um, yeah. Um, also being able to, so when reflecting, so this is all about like figuring out what, what life and work should be about. So one thing that always comes to my mind is like creativity. Um, 
I know we are like in an industry that is very tech driven and it sounds a bit boring, but actually um, like I'm, so one of the things that I don't do at work, but the general do is taking a lot of photography. Um, I was producing music back then. So I, th I thought like, hmm, maybe recently I got less creative because I don't do so much. Or why don't I write any lyrics anymore? Um, and I think the creativity is actually also at work. Like, I mean, just finding new processes, finding good solutions, and the solutions that doesn't, they don't only need to be technical, but the solutions can also be or like on the people level, like figuring out how to best mix the team members, how to best um, define a process to work together. That for me is also really something creative. Um, so I kind of want to put <laughs> to put that on the positive notes um yeah so the the conclusion is um there's constant change um and i'm really passionate about being able to in an environment that is changing i uh, have to acknowledge that change is not always easy for everyone so i think also to find the right balance is really really important because we cannot expect all of our co-workers all of our team members or even group of community members um, some of them just don't want change every day, and I think that's also important to recognize. Um, but I think to acknowledge that, yeah, every one of us kind of changes and the company changes over time, um, that is constant, uh, I think is, also, uh, is like really important. Um, this talk is initially about um, like how to help others help me. And what I really like, for example, is that um, that person um, in Milan, he organized the Tour de Drupal and he said like, yeah, he only organized it because we were tweeting about Tour de Drupal. Um, so you can, sometimes you just make a, a very small thing, like send out a tweet and then um, that kind of was helping others help me because he took me for a really nice ride. And also, for example, when we work with the, with the Rules Initiative, that's another um, very successful sprint that we had at Drupal Dev Days. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's a nice way of putting it like as a conclusion. And I'd be happy to hear um, your thoughts around, around how you organize your work, uh, what makes you successful, um, what are the challenges. Um, thanks a lot for your attention.